Hi. Well, today I'm going to talk about Tremont repair, maintenance, and cleaning. I always use a clean one of these. <clears throat> Aside from that, I think the most important thing with brass repair is to prevent dents from happening in the first place. And uh, most repair on a trombone is out of the reach of most teachers, certainly out of my reach. Uh, the thing we have to be most careful of is the hand slide. The slide slide. Any kind of a dent at all in that slide will freeze it right up. And the only person who can take out uh, a dent in the slide is a competent repair person, uh, taking very expensive and very specialized tools. So I think it's important to teach young trombone players to be very, very careful of their slides. First of all, always leave your slide locked. This should start from day one. You pick up your horn, you always check to make sure the slide is locked. Uh, when you put the horn down, make sure the slide is locked, and so on. It is so easy, having done this a number of times when I was young, to not realize the slide is unlocked, and the next thing you know, you have contributed your slide to the flute section, 15 feet and a half of you. So, that's first of all. Notice how I'm holding this slide. My pinky is under that brace. Whenever I am sitting or holding the trombone, doing anything except playing the trombone, that pinky is there. It's kind of a backup mechanism to, whoops, I forgot to lock my slide. So there's another thing to teach the kids. As far as hand position goes, put that pinky there. So preventing dents from happening um, makes life an awful lot easier. With repair, I like to talk about things that you, me or you, can do and things that you can't do. Now, the list of things that you can do is about that long, and let's go through them one at a time. First thing you can do is free up a stuck mouthpiece. And I am actually pulling my mouthpiece out of the horn as I speak. Stuck mouthpiece is very, very common, especially for young kids. If they put the mouthpiece in the horn with a pop like that, um, Odds are it'll get stuck. It's caused by a vapor lock between the shank of the mouthpiece and the lead pipe on the instrument itself. So teach them to put the mouthpiece in the horn and slightly turn to the right, and that will keep the mouthpiece in. However, if it gets stuck, you need a mouthpiece puller. This is a Bobcat. There are a number of different brands. I just like this one. For one thing, it fits all brasses, all the way from trumpet down to tuba. It works by putting these collars around the shank of the mouthpiece and then tightening this until the mouthpiece pops. It is a vise. It's a portable vise. The only way to pull a mouthpiece is to have equal pressure um, pulling the mouthpiece away from the horn, like this, so to speak. Um, this is something that every band director should have. I've even seen elementary band directors carry them around in the glove compartment of their car. So it is critical. It's something that has to be uh, in everybody's arsenal, so to speak. The second thing is a shank that gets dropped and it gets out of round, bent, dented is a better word. This is a mouthpiece truing tool can also be used to plant turnips, I think, but don't know. And goes into the shank and you just do this until the shank is back into round. Now, there's only so far you can go. If the shank is really dented, then nothing will take that out. You could take it to a repair person and they could, I think, pound it with a wooden or a rawhide hammer and that might work. But sometimes they're dented to the point where the metal is cracked. In that case, you need a new mouthpiece. This also goes, I think, for plating. If the silver plating on a mouthpiece wears away, you have a real susceptibility to um, an infection of the lip, which happens to me. I'm very, very allergic to metal, and I'll get into what I do to fix that later. But it is probably more expensive to replate a mouthpiece than it is to buy a new one. And mouthpieces are relatively cheap. I'm guessing 50 to $60 for um, a Bach mouthpiece. So consider that. 
If things get out of hand with dents or scratches or lacquer or silver plating, sorry, peeling off, just buy a new mouthpiece. So the Turing tool, tool will fix this. Another thing that band directors can fix is what we still call the spit valve cork. Now they're not really cork anymore. They're almost all synthetic, which is a good thing because cork rots. And one of the biggest problems in years past with spit valve corks was they would rot. And then next thing you know, you'd have a leak in your horn. So all you need to do to fix this is have a supply of spit valve corks. Clean the oval one out, put a little bit of super glue or Elmer's wood glue, if it's a cork, and put it in there and just let it sit. Now, how do you know the cork or the synthetic cork needs replacing? If the sound is airy but cannot be pedagogically fixed. How do you know? Take the slide, take it off, plug one end, and blow. Nothing should happen. If you hear this, then you probably have a leak in the cork. Excuse me. By the way, this can be done on trumpet, euphonium, or tuba. Just pull that tuning slide out, plug one end, and blow. You may also get the taste of tuning slide grease, but yeah, that's life in the, in the battleground, I guess. That's how you check for a broken or rotted or unseated cork. Um, tuning slides. This, I think, is where maintenance can fix a problem before it happens. Tuning slides will often get stuck, especially on euphoniums and tubas and horns that have long slides where the, the slide itself is brass. It's not lacquered. Then things set in over the summer. So you always want to make sure that you have tuning slide grease, not Vaseline because that evaporates, but tuning slide grease on your tuning slides. On trombone, move your tuning slide like this. Take your two thumbs and push up and push down. Let me give you a better vantage point. Push up, push down. What that does is that puts equal pressure on the slide and you don't bend things. Occasionally these will get stuck. If you have guts, you can tie a handkerchief and kind of yank it and that might free that onset of corrosion enough to move the slide. I get nervous. I've seen other people do it. Sometimes it works. If the slide is truly stuck, repair person. Especially if it's truly stuck in the wrong place. Then obviously you need to fix that. Uh, another problem that will happen is the spit valve itself, which is very soft metal, will get bent. In other words, if this is the spit valve cork and this is the opening hole, so to speak, at the bottom of the slide, that will happen. It won't seal because it's bent. Again, if you have guts, you can bend it back down. But again, just do this at your own risk. Sometimes it's easy. Sometimes you might have a little problem. While we're down on this part of the slide, another thing you can fix is with a screwdriver, this post right here that holds the spit valve in, oftentimes the screw will very slightly, as things get dirty, back out every time. You know, think of how many hundreds of times per day that you open that spit valve. This, the, uh, the screw gets backed out. If it gets backed out too much, sprung that spring will go flying. It's under enormous amount of tension. Every now and then, check that screw and make sure it's tight. It just takes a tiny little screwdriver. One of those things you should have as a band director, I think, is a screwdriver set. Uh, two more things. This rubber bumper, which is here at the bottom of the slide, is very important. It's basically a shock absorber. When you put this trombone down and the slide is on the floor, this rubber bumper prevents the slide from slipping, in which case the horn will go flying. So these are very simple. It's a, 
there we go. Pretty cheap. You just pull the old one off and shove the old one, uh, the new one, back on the bottom of the slide. And that's it. That's as far as I can go with preparing a trombone. Anything else is beyond my capabilities. If there's a dent in the horn, I can't take it out. If there's a, a stuck tuning slide that doesn't respond to really pushing hard up and down, I can't fix that. I don't have the ability to take corrosion out. If the spring on the spit valve breaks, I can't fix that. In a pinch, you could put, and I mean emergency as in the spring, the spit valve breaks as you walk on stage, which happened to me once. Um, you can put cloth underneath the spit valve and wrap a rubber band or a piece of string around it. And obviously to empty the spit, you have to take your slide off. I wish I had a video of that concert. I can't remember what I was playing, but every five minutes, for some reason, a guy in the back row kept taking his slide off. Well, my spit valve cork broke. And I think it was the spring on top of that. So that's all you can do as far as repair. Mainly it's maintenance. Um, a good repair person is worth his or her weight in gold, especially if they do good slide work. But again, preventing the slide from getting banged up is the best thing to do. Well, I'm back. Still haven't figured out how this works, but it's a great visual. I'm going to talk about cleaning at this point and maintenance. Let's start with the, uh, the top of the horn, which is the mouthpiece. And just to kind of recap the parts of the mouthpiece, this is the rim at the top. Inside is the cup. Where it leads into the instrument itself is called the shank. So rim, cup, shank. Notice that my mouthpiece is a custom-made model and I actually have a gold rim. That's because I'm allergic to metal. If I were to play a silver rim within a week, I would get a gigantic sore on my lip. So gold plating fixes that. Parts of the rim. Um, the part that contacts your lip can be different shapes. It can be flat, can be round, best is in between. Cups can be shallow, deep, in between. On trombone, there are two shank sizes, large for professional horns, small shank for student horns and for jazz horns. So that's just a, a quick introduction to the parts of the mouthpiece that uh, we'll deal with cleaning them. So to clean a mouthpiece, every brass player should own a mouthpiece brush. They're about a dollar fifty, two dollars. They're obvious in how they work. Put soap here. At least once a week, clean from the cup down and from the shank up. And the idea being that anything that goes from your mouth into the horn has to start at the mouthpiece. If you keep this clean, then cleaning the horn becomes quite a bit easier. So this is a mouthpiece brush. Very important for every brass player to own one of these. The next part, excuse me, is the slide. Now, I think for first year kids, slide oil makes sense because at that point, they're not really comfortable with taking the slide apart, which is what I'm going to do right now. Uh, I think I'd be very worried about a, say, fifth grade or mid-year dropping that slide. So slide oil for the first year makes a lot of sense. Make sure it's slide oil, not valve oil. Valve oil is quite a bit more denatured kerosene than Tremone's slide oil. It doesn't really work that well. In the second year, though, you need to put... Uh, what we call trombone cream or trombone grease, whatever, on the slide. The idea is that this beads up the water and acts like ball bearings on the slide. Now, this again involves taking the slide apart, so you have to be very careful in introducing this to your kids. So, I've taken the horn apart and I have the slide, and yes, the slide is locked. So, carefully unlock it. You want a Kleenex and you want Tremone slide cream. This is literally 
uh, a slightly different version of Pond's cold cream. Back in the 40s and 50s, from what I understand, there was no Tremon cream, and, and professional Tremonists would go in and buy Pond's cold cream, facial cream, and use it on their slides. Uh, back in the 60s, I, I suspect, uh, <clears throat> instrument manufacturers realized there's a better way to do this, so they came out with Tremon cream. I prefer Super Slick. I sound like an advertisement here. It's just what I like. There are others like Trombotine, Bach Cream, Con, whatever, but I, I prefer Super Slick. So, start with a Kleenex and then the Tremon cream. Take the slide apart and carefully put the outer slide on the floor. Obviously, you should be doing this in a room where nobody is entering. Wipe off the inner slide. Now, you won't see much here because I do this quite often. With kids, it may come off as black. Now, that's not um, scientifically a disgusting thing. What you're looking at is all the dust that is collected on that inner slide. You want to wipe that off. So take a tiny bit, and I'm hoping that this will show up. <laughs> it's a very tiny bit, and put it at the bottom of the slide and rub it around. The bottom of the slide, by the way, those are called stockings or sleeves. If you look on your slide and it looks significantly white, you put too much on. Less is better in this case, and I'm wiping this so that it's all over the slide, but for the most part, I start at the bottom and go here. Finally, take a spray bottle. This is water. Yes, this will test your discipline techniques with young kids, but explain that the water is to go on the slide and nowhere else. And I'm spraying the slide. Put the slide back together, and there you go. That's all you need. That should be done probably twice a week for kids that are playing their horns um, on a daily basis. Twice a week would be fine. On the bell, the reason this bell is shiny is because it's brass with lacquer covering. So to clean the bell, you just need to put water on it and wipe it off with a soft cloth. That's it. I have seen uh, lacquer cleaning cloths or bell cleaning cloths that come with horns, and those are not a good idea. They have silicone in them and could put tiny little scratches. The only thing you need to clean anything lacquered is simply water. Uh -huh. For the tuning slide, no, very important. There are two slides on a trombone: the slide slide and the tuning slide. Don't mix those two up. Tuning slides require tuning slide grease. It is very heavy. Don't use Vaseline. Vaseline is water-based and the water will evaporate out and the next thing you know, you're actually using a horn with a dry tuning side. So tuning side grease. I happen to like Schilke. It's basically anhydrous lanolin, um, but I think anything that says tuning slide grease is fine. Wipe off the tuning slide, put the grease on. Notice I'm using the double thumb technique. Wipe off the extra double thumb technique. Push it back to A440 and that's all you need. I have a rotary valve. Rotary valves are surprisingly maintenance free. You don't need to do much. Uh, in repair, I talked about how to repair a, a rotary valve. Well, the answer is take it to somebody who knows what they're doing. I don't. I would never disassemble one. All you need is to take rotary valve oil, and this is a different viscosity from valve oil for trumpets, from piston valves, for instance. Use rotary valve oil drop it right down here, and while the oil is being dropped, move the, the valve, move the lever. That's all you need to do for a rotary valve. Um, 
I used to, in years past, talk about stringing a rotary valve, but honestly, I haven't seen a string rotary valve, a la French horn, in years. They're so uncommon that I think at this point, I'm not going to bother with that. You can look it up online. Be aware that trombone rotary valves that need string are backwards from a horn valve. But now we have replaced these with ball bearings. I think because trombonists are so deathly afraid that the valve string will snap in the middle of a concert, rendering the horn useless, that they have gone to ball bearings. I don't know. That's what I think. So for ball bearings, um, use some ball bearing oil. Sewing machine oil is good. Hetman makes a heavy valve oil specifically for those ball bearings. That's what I would do to, uh, to oil the rotary valve. Finally, cleaning the horn. So, cleaning the horn starts with cleaning the mouthpiece on a regular basis. If the mouthpiece is a little bit uh, tarnished, just get Wright's Silver Polish. That's polish uh, for fine silver, so it won't scratch. And that takes the polish off the mouthpiece. For the bell, we've talked about that. Just wipe it off, put water and wipe it off, oil the valve. Now, cleaning the slide slide. So to clean the horn, you want to fill a bathtub with warm water. And for students, I would say this happens maybe once a year. You want the water to be warm, not hot, because you don't want to strip the lacquer off the instrument. You, know, you can put the bell in the water, but I find that bells just don't get that dirty. Slides do. So to clean a slide, you need a trombone cleaning snake. This is a very tightly coiled piece of metal. I'm snapping it with bristles at both ends. Get a trombone snake. Trumpet snakes are about two thirds the, side, the size and they will not work. You have to be able to drop the snake all the way through the slide. So put this in the bathtub, then take that slide apart carefully. And I think every sentence from now on is going to begin with the word carefully. Carefully put the outer slide on the floor, put soap, on this bristle and snake it all the way down, hence the word snake. Do the same on both ends of the instruments. Uh, you may be shocked to see what comes out. That's why you're using a bathtub in the bathroom. That's cleaning the inner slide. Cleaning the outer slide is exactly the same thing. First of all, wash off the old soap, put new soup, soap on, and snake this all the way down. Make sure it goes all the way down and around the crook. Do it on both sides. Why? Because months of super slick and tremone cream building up on the outer slide makes that slide get slower and slower. At least once a year, you need to clean that off. And that's it. That's maintenance, cleaning, and repair. 